Hi, my name is John Carlo. I'm from Toronto, Canada, and 20 years ago, I taught in one of Ontario's first fully digital schools, uh, and since then have been working with schools, school systems, and countries across the globe, uh, helping them transition to digital. And, you know, I've been so fortunate to be in different parts of the world, and every time I do a workshop and work with uh, leaders, I always ask this question, which, what are the challenges uh, that technology has in education? And it doesn't matter whether I'm in uh, Ireland or India or Australia or Malaysia or North or South America, the answers I get can always be categorized into one of these four categories. They either relate with infrastructure management, we don't have the access, the Wi-Fi, the devices, or having to do with leadership and planning, or uh, the technology. Is it connected to the types of practices we want in our classrooms? Or, or uh, oh my goodness, do our teachers ever need the supports in, in the classroom? And so these are four categories that consistently come up time and time again. Now, uh, the past few years have been fortunate uh, to be part of Catalyst, where they've been convening uh, school system and government leaders from a variety of places around the world, uh, over 100 countries. And they've been asking questions around and engaging these leaders in dialogue. And last year was especially interesting uh, because before where the conversations were face to face, last year they were all done remotely and all related to the topic of what people were dealing with as a result of the pandemic. Now, I want to share some of the insights that came out from these conversations from last year and make a connection for you. So one of the immediate things uh, that came up was, of course, uh, the impact that school closures have had on children and families alike, as well the impact it's had on teachers, some being more comfortable embracing new technologies and new models of learning, others finding it challenging. At the same time, this realization that Equity needs to be at the forefront of the work we do in education. Of course, access is not uh, equal throughout. Uh, some learners had access to devices and network infrastructure. Others engaged via radio, radio and television. Regardless of the access though, what was the quality of the learning and making sure that the quality was sustained no matter what uh, the access looked like. And that was a challenge uh, throughout many parts of the world. Now, connected to that, was um, this concept of maintaining or capturing students' attention, especially when learners are at home and they're ready distractions. That was a common theme uh, that we heard. Uh, and as well, uh, connected and very, uh, very poignant, uh, both with teachers and with students, was this concept of connections and the importance of the pedagogical uh, connections between teachers and learners and between learners and each other, uh, which was missed this past year, was a critical part of what the learning process was for learners and also uh, for educators. And for educators, of course, there was such variability with their comforts with technology. The, the concept of supports uh, was especially uh, true uh, this past year. Now, the silver lining in all of this was this spirit that we have learned new models, new ways, new platforms, new technologies that could be integrated into how regular school works. And so there was this conversation around how we take these learnings and these insights and define new ways in which we engage our learners, new flexible models that might incorporate some in person and some online. And this, I think, is a positive step forward for us uh, in education. Now, there's a parallel between these conversations that I've been having many years ago and the conversations that were had this year in that they're aligned and they're paralleled, right? So we, we talked about the supports uh, for teachers. We talked about the connectivity between, you know, access uh, and equity. Uh, as well is true the importance of connections and technologies being uh, uh, supporters or enablers of uh, these connections. And of course, uh, how that all needs to be connected together in a strategic plan that actually gets rolled out and has the impact that it's intended. And that's really where we need to go now because more, much more of the world now has access to technology, is now incorporating it, there's more funding towards it. But we know we haven't yet addressed those challenges. They still persist, they still remain. And so how do we improve technology's impact in education? Well. 
it means that we have to have conversations around these themes. Now, uh, about four or five years ago, Smart Technologies commissioned some research to look at schools and districts that were already having success integrating technologies. And they asked, what are the frameworks or the models that you use, that you looked at? And they let, mentioned a variety of different organizations. When you looked at all, when we looked at all of those, what we noticed was their common themes, 22 in fact, common characteristics between all of them. And these are 22 things that we should be having conversations about. Now, what SMART did is actually turn that into a series of questions that any of you can take uh, and it, through an assessment uh, and it's completely free. And what it'll do is you can compare how you respond related to others, specifically others in your school. So if you're a teacher, uh, compare yourself to other teachers, compare it to the principal, compare it to other system leaders. And what you get is a picture of how your e school ecosystem um, is doing related to each of the different categories. What areas need improvement and what areas that you're already succeeding in. And what it's intended to do is be a conversation starter so that we make sure we don't overlook all these different pieces that it takes to make sure that technology has impact. Now, uh, we don't have much time left together, but I do want to unpack one concept which is super important. It's been important in the past, especially important now, was making sure that the technologies we select and that we use are uh, at a foundation serving certain practices, teaching and learning practices that had value. Now, in order to do that though, we have to have an underlying understanding of well, what is learning and then what are the practices that support that learning and what technologies would be best used to enable that. And in a very oversimplified way, I'm going to define three things in terms of what learning is. Uh, the first is uh, this concept of prior knowledge. The second element is that of attention. And the third is the concept of memory. Now, all our learners come with different experiences and that shapes what their prior knowledge is and it shapes how they react to the new knowledge that we give them. We have to be attuned to that. Now, they only react because they're attentive and we all know attention spans vary. So how do we maintain attention? And of course, uh, once they maintain attention, their ability to store it into long-term memory is dependent on how actively engaged we get them with the learning. Now, the best way to un understand this is to experience it. So I'm going to give you an example of what this could look like. Uh, this could be a teacher in a classroom with a, a smart panel, a smart board in the room, or it could be projected, or this could be done remotely with the teacher's modeling. Regardless, you have students select how many different apples they want. If a student comes up to the board, they can write the numbers. Another one could write this number. It, another one could define the operation. Maybe it's online and students are calling this out. Uh, and of course, uh, other students would respond. Now, this is great. It's engaging. It's visually stimulating. Some students are involved, but it's not all students involved. And have we ma managed to uh, capture and sustain their attention and then uh, activate all of them in this learning experience? Well, what if we elevated it? So I'm going to give you another example that would ele elevate this concept. We're going to use uh, the platform Lumio by Smart Technologies. Now, what we're going to do here is the same task, but we're going to add another element to it. And maybe it's something that connects with our learners. Maybe it's something in our classroom, uh, maybe a favorite stuffy that exists in our classroom that we want to connect into this lesson, maybe something that's meaningful for our learners. So let's actually take Bali and let's put her inside the lesson. Give me a second. So here we go. I'm going to put Bali in and oh, Bali. Yes, she's inside. Okay, Bali's inside our lesson now because our students love Bali. And so we're going to use her as part of the lesson. Now, here's the thing what we're going to do. We're going to take this lesson and we're actually going to distribute it to all our learners because we want all our learners to be engaging in the learning process. Now, I'm going to show you here. I have a student, Marco. He's going to, he got the activity. He's going to start it. Now, here, all the students that are in your class will be listed. In a moment, we're going to see Marco join the stage here. And now all our learners could be engaging in the task. So, Let's say Marco is going to take uh, three uh, bollies uh, and then uh, he's going to uh, add one bolly. So there's three uh, bollies. He's going to add one bolly and he's going to end up getting uh, his uh, results, which are four, uh, four uh, bollies, and he's going to write it in there. Right. So there's Marco. He's uh, he's completed the task. Now, as you noticed, as a teacher, I can see all what all the learners are doing. Now, this is important because I might realize there's an opportunity to give feedback to Marco because he forgot 
what symbol is there. And so Marco can notice that and then he can, uh, uh, he can uh, alter uh, alternatively uh, reply or respond. Um, and this example uh, is, is something that I want to show you that highlights these key elements of how important it is to make sure we engage all our learners in the active process of whatever it is we're learning with them. We create opportunities to take the real world and what's around our learners and connect it to, to them. And of course, uh, identify that there might be gaps in some prior knowledge so, and opportunities to give feedback. So that's just one example that highlights uh, one important element with pedagogy connected to technology, but there's all these other components that are uh, important as well. So with that, I encourage you, uh, you know, take the assessments completely free to do, just scan the QR code, uh, or as well, if you want to try Lumio absolutely free, uh, you can go ahead and click on that link or scan it. That's yours to try. Uh, it's been a pleasure sharing uh, some of the insight with you today, and I'll now uh, open it to questions, and, or, or as well, feel free to email me, be happy to respond.